What is going on, Bucks fans? We are back here again for another edition of the Pirate Parlay Podcast. As always, I'm your host, JC Allen. We're on the Sick Podcast Network. Love these guys. Love everything that they're doing. The platform, they're increasing everywhere. they got baseball, hockey, college, whatever your, your sport is. Look out for their one of their podcasts, and they probably have something going on for that. So um, we're going to jump into all these. The first breaking news, we've got some breaking news out of um, – you know, the NFL uh, that relates to the Buccaneers. David Moore has signed with the Carolina Panthers. Stop me if you're shocked. Reuniting with Brad, uh, Idzik, and Dave Canales. But <laughs> just joking there. Uh, we got a great show for tonight. Bucks have been busy, busy, busy. They've retooled the offensive line. They retooled the cornerback room. Last week they had signed uh, most of their key key got key free agents that they had um they tacked another one on later this week we'll talk about that as well we'll do that with what my special guest tonight is going to be you may know him from real bucks talk he is dr michael plus we'll have him in the building and we'll jump into all those signings and more our thoughts draft is coming up rapidly approaching second wave of free agency who might the bucks be looking at and that uh, we'll get into all that and more right after this turn up your volume because you're about to listen to the, the sick, sick podcast. podcast. Sick podcast. Pirate Parlay. Battle intercepted. And picked off of the end zone. Bucks are going to beat the Chiefs. We're the champions of the world. The sickest Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. It's going to be sick. Welcome back. Such a great intro. Anytime you hear Deckerhoff, uh, Deckerhoff on that call of Antoine Winfield Jr., uh it, it it's great so uh without further ado let us get our guest in here dr michael plus of real bucks talk how are you doing hey how are you how are you doing man good to be I'm back. doing doing great thanks for coming on appreciate you popping on here i'm going to talk a little bucks draft free agency all everything in between um how's everything been with you uh, it's been good i just got back from vacation went to uh oregon so that was really nice get on to the west coast um but while I was away, everything was going on. So, you know, staying, uh, trying to catch up with all the Buccaneers news. Obviously, we had a, a live stream last night and it was a lot of fun and excited to talk more about it. You didn't get caller on the way there, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an old Oregon Trail joke. If, you know, if my older audience definitely got that. Uh, if you're younger, check out Oregon Trail. It revolutionized computer games uh, back in middle school for me. <laughs> But uh, I digress. Um, so first off, let's um, let's just jump right in. I want everyone to know, if you don't know who uh, Michael Pless, I'm just going to call him Pless for the rest of the podcast. Um, let, let them know what you do, where they can find you, um, and all your great work that you're producing because you're doing a ton of great stuff, especially leading up to the draft with, with um, breakdowns of potential draft targets. Let them know where you're at, what you do, where they find you. Yeah, so you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, just search Real Bucks Talk, uh, type that in, and you can find our channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button. And really, we just, you know, we follow pretty much everything Buccaneers, but we're more uh, film based. So we do a lot of film analysis. So all 22 stuff with draft prospects. Obviously, we cover uh, the Buccaneers players as well, you know, do weekly film breakdowns of their games. Um, we do breakdowns of, you know, free agents, players, all, all those sorts of things. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun just trying to, you know, create new content as we go, try to stay up to date with all of you guys. And we appreciate all the fan support. Um, and it's it's fun to be on, on this podcast here. This is the first time uh, for me. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. And if you guys aren't checking out Real Bucks Talk, I highly recommend it. There's plenty of us talking the talk and doing this um, and, you know, kind of breaking down things. But Plus and, and his co-host over there, um, they really get into the film breakdown of what's going on. Um, they've got some great stuff on some draft profiles. I'm sure they're going to have some some of the guys that the, the Bucks just signed in free agency. They'll be doing some all 22 on those guys as well. Kind of showing you the in-depth X's and O's and, and breakdowns and all that. So definitely check that stuff out. It's been a uh, re, you know resourceful tool for me um, when I'm you know during the season and obviously in free agency. I always like to go to them um, and see those breakdowns. So great stuff. Um, I mentioned at the top of the show breaking news: uh, David Moore, longtime Buccaneer, longtime hero for the Bucks, has <laughs> departed in free agency. 
to Ca- the Carolina Panthers. Another loss for the Bucs. They lost Aaron Stinney uh, to the Giants. They lost Nick Lavrette over to the Patriots, my Patriots, um, which I'm excited about that for his, him for that opportunity. Um, but they lost another one today in uh, – and David Moore, your thoughts on that? Were you shocked by this breaking news? Was this something that you prepared yourself mentally that he might leave in free agency? Yeah, I, I think this one was on the wall pretty much. It was writing on the wall. Like, you know, it's a good fit for him. You know, obviously, Dave was a big fan of, you know, his skill set. And obviously, he came on strong at the end of the season for the Buccaneers last year. And, you know, going to Carolina, I think he'll have a good opportunity to maybe be, you know, that third or fourth receiver like he was with us. And yeah, I think it's a good fit for him. It's obviously a system that he really enjoyed and it should be uh, interesting to see how it plays out for him. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's a system he knows. They rely on him. They trust him. Um, as far as kind of roster moves, I think they would have liked to have him on the roster a little bit earlier in the season. Right. Um, but it's not, you know, kind of he gives his input and, you know, other people are in charge of the roster as far as moves are made and stuff like that. So good fit for him. You know, we're going to get into all these signings. But while we're on the, the topic of departures, there is a big one, um, uh, one that many fans rejoiced, ones that many fans probably knew was coming due to some, you know, cryptic tweets throughout the year and in the off season. But Devin White, um, he has now gone over to the Philadelphia Eagles. Another shocker there um, to take on that inside linebacker role. Reported was like seven and a half million dollars at first. It turns out that it's really just a four million dollar deal. So pretty much a prove it deal with the Eagles. What are your thoughts on that? Um, him going there. Obviously, were you shocked by that was his landing spot? I don't think many people were, but. Um, what are your thoughts on the departure of Devin White? And then we'll get kind of get into that room of, you know, where do the Bucks go from here? Yeah, I think Devin, you know, obviously uh, he made it known that he, he had some love for the Philadelphia Eagles yeah. uh, over the years. And it, and it, I think it's a good fit for him. You know, obviously going to Vic uh, Fangio's defense, it's a defense that allows his linebackers to run run free he likes to get you know the defensive line to take up blocks and allow linebackers to make play behind the line of scrimmage and that's something Devin can do if he is going downhill you know that east to west um speed utilized as well and i think they'll make it easier for him as far as responsibilities and coverage which is a good thing for him and you know, we'll see how it works out, but I'm not shocked by the news. I think it's a good thing for the Buccaneers. I think that was also a move that was definitely coming. Um, and I, I'm very proud of Todd Bowles and Jason Light for the move that they did make, especially in season to go to KJ Britt more and, and see what these guys have. And you obviously saw a, an improved defense from, you know, a gap assignment sound and just playing their job. Um, and it just didn't work out for Devin over the last couple of years, especially since that 2020 playoff run just hasn't been the same. And uh, I think it was the right move for both parties. And, you know, you wish Devin the best going forward. Yeah, I think, you know, kudos again to Jason and, and Todd for in season. But not only that, for, you know, making this move and not bringing him back. Obviously, yeah. whether it was with the Bucks or another team, he wasn't getting $100 million after the season. But, Bowles really, you know, was like a father figure to him and and they were really close. And I mean, that's yeah. a number five overall pick that that Jason Light is saying, all right, we we failed, you know, like it's not going to work. Um, we, we got a fifth year option out of him, but that's about it. So those are difficult decisions to make as well. And, you know, as far as Devin White, I wish him nothing but the best. Um, he pulled some antics throughout the season. That Green Bay game was kind of, uh, you know, throw the that was a throw the hands up and like, okay, this is just, this isn't going to work going forward. I think that's really when the writing was on the wall, when Mm -hmm. medically cleared, but said, Oh, I can't go a couple hours before the game. Like that's what are we doing here? Um, And then obviously when you got guy like KJ Britt, who has about half, maybe less than that, the athleticism and speed that, you know, Devin White does, and he's out there outperforming him. I mean, KJ Britt's your classic two down thumper. Like you Mm -hmm. get him off the field. And, you know, he just with his football IQ was in the right positions in coverage and and making plays on the ball that way. So, 
you know, it, it's a tough situation. The Bucks did use a fifth round pick last year in Savassier Dennis. In his lone start against the Colts, he looked pretty good. He had five tackles. Again, mm -hmm. this is a, you know, I always say, and you guys have heard me beat the dead horse into the wall about rookie years. There's so many things going on with a rookie coming in. First of all, they didn't, they spent half the season not training uh, for, for football activities, they did it for the combine and pro days. Then they're learning a new town, new playbook, new teammates, new coaches, new way to get around everything like that. You know, the regiment, not to mention the, the length of the season, all these things playing a factor to why some rookies, you know, especially if you're not like a day one blue at blue chip starter type guy can ha have some struggles, you know, and hit that rookie wall. But, um, I'm excited to see what Servasi can, can bring. And he's more of like, he's more Le uh, Levante than he is Devin. Um, mm -hmm. But I think he can be a good compliment. And J.J. Russell had an outstanding start in the, I think it was, a, was it the 49ers or the, the Panthers game? One of those two games? Yes. Um, yeah. He had a sack. I think a forced fumble. He he, was, he played really well. Um, and the Bucks have already started, you know, talking to some inside linebackers at the Combine. They're bringing Edron Cooper in mm -hmm. for a top 30 visit. So um, I love Blake Cashman. I saw the money he got, and I said the Bucks could easily afforded that. I wish they brought him in. I thought yeah. him next to Levante would be perfect. Um, Jerome Baker was my backup. He went to Seattle. So mm -hmm. I think looking at, at where they are now, they're probably going to address this position in the draft. And I don't necessarily think it's going to be early. Um, mm -hmm. It could be, but I think they've got two guys that they're kind of high on that they like. KJ Britt, I don't think, is going to cost a lot of money to resign next year, even if he does have a great season. Um, right. But you might want to plan for that as well. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see where they attack that position. Obviously, they want to do a little bit more homework on a guy like Edgen Cooper, um, who arguably is one of the top two, three guys in this draft class. I think a lot of people got Peyton yeah. Willis as number one. Jeremiah Trotter is right there. But I think. Those are the top three guys really in this draft class as far as inside linebacker goes, which is not a great draft class. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to yeah. have patience with these inside linebackers too. Not, not Most of them don't turn up overnight. It takes a little while to get, get used to the NFL. Right, absolutely. I mean, it's. I think it's a good position for the Bucs. They're in, in a good spot. You know, like you said, with uh, KJ Britt and Servasi, I think that is, they're okay if they have to play with those guys, especially with... Also, J.J. Russell, who showed flashes. Um, but when you look at this draft, there's opportunities to maybe, you know, if someone falls like a junior Colson from Michigan or if you can get a Peyton Wilson, um, you know, obviously that would be high value uh, to get one of those two guys that are pretty much, you know, the cream of the crop at the, at the linebacker group. Adrian Cooper is more of a almost like Devin White, very super athletic, um, can run around, make plays, maybe a little bit more instinct, instinctual as a linebacker. So I, I think they're in a good spot if if that position does fall to them in the draft. And they it's certainly they can wait on it. You have other guys like Cedric Gray from uh, North Carolina. Um, also, um, Trevor, Trevron, I think it's Trevon Wallace from Kentucky. Trevon Wallace from Kentucky. Yeah, Trevon yeah. Wallace. Yeah, I really like his game. Um, so yeah. obviously there's some familiarity with Liam Cohen, you know, just knowing him being on the team. So yeah, they're in a great spot when it comes to that position. It's something they don't have to force. And, you know, pretty much every other position on this team with what they've done so far in free agency, they're set up really well uh, for the draft. Yeah, there's some other guys later on. A guy like, like John Trey Hunter is another guy. Mm -hmm. I think um, former safety. So I think the biggest thing that they're going to look for um, is obviously instincts, leadership, love of football. Like they did this last draft. That's going to be huge for them. All those all those things that they got in this draft, they're going to carry onto this draft. But um, Devin White was an athlete playing linebacker. They need mm -hmm. someone that's uh, you know a linebacker, you know, playing linebacker. Yeah. Um, and if he's athletic like Devin White, perfect. What do you think they're looking more for? Is there are they looking more for potentially a guy that can, you know, be that blitzer, be kind of all the good things that Devin White were, or do they think they're looking for more balance in a guy who's not going to be out of position, not going to be a liability in coverage, and not going to be, you know, overshooting his block, getting off blocks mm -hmm. is a big one. What do you think is the big like priority for them as far as that spot? Are they looking for someone to compliment David? And have many of the same skill sets that he has, or are they what do you what would you think they're looking for? Well, I, I think it's a little mixture of both, but this defense really sets up for the for the middle. Like your middle linebackers are really 
that and the safeties are really focused on making the plays. Everything is funneled towards them uh, being those guys to rack up numbers. Like you look at KJ Britt last year, he comes in the game and he does his job. He ends up with 10 tackles because he's in the right spot. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, So really the scheme sets the linebackers up for success. And I think that's a good thing where you don't really need a super athletic dude at, at linebacker. Yes. It's nice to have Levante because he can make so many plays, take out guards, you know, sacrifice himself and, and still end up with 13 tackles because he's that damn good. All right. But I, I think they're in a good spot to go after either or. Um, but I think from what they've had, obviously you probably want something a little bit more balanced and you really just want a guy that's going to understand the scheme and understand how to play gaps and angles. I think that's what they're looking for. And that goes into why they brought Jordan Whitehead back. Like that guy knows what his job is and he just brings so much as a extra layer to your defense and obviously playing in the box. So we already know the run defense is going to go back up for this team. It's going to go back to probably be number one just because of that addition. <laughs> um, so, I mean, he's huge. I mean, you look at since he's been gone, the run defense hasn't been the same. And now you bring him in. It's going to be pretty good to have him as a safety net back there. Yeah, absolutely. And we've spent far too much time on Devin White talk. And who's going <laughs> to replace him on the middle of the field. Let's get into some more of the, the these other signings. And I mean, Kind of wrapped into that. Levante was re-signed, you know, last week. Um, yeah. He'll be speaking to the media on Friday, so st- stay tuned for that. I'll, we'll we'll be talking to him then. Um, but what a key part of this defense! He gets a raise, he gets bumped up. Uh, at this point, he's year to year. Um, but I mean, if he looks this year like he did next year, I don't see a problem with him coming back for another year. He's just so important to this defense. So another masterclass move by Light, just being able to get all these guys back in the fold um levante being the kind of the final straw there still got to work on those extensions for werps and antoine winfield jr but on uh on um josh palmer um is it josh palmer um not sure nfl network steve Mm -hmm. weish and i think it's josh palmer but i could be wrong um they were they had light on and he was talking about how those two are the next Mm -hmm. priority for the for this team but um this weekend was busy man yeah, they got to work. They uh, they got to work on the offensive line, got to work on the secondary. Jordan Whitehead was obviously brought back. That's something that we didn't talk about on last week's show because it didn't happen yet. Um, or did we? I can't remember. But yeah, Jordan. Actually, we did talk about it. It was announced that day. So yeah, Jordan Whitehead, we already talked about. But, um, you know, then they signed Brees Hall, his running mate down in the Jets. Um, they also brought in some offensive linemen, Ben Bredesen. Um, Sue Opita uh, from the Eagles, Ben Bredesen from the Giants. Uh, they brought back Justin School. Uh, even Light had some fun announcing John uh, John Wolford himself, you know, <laughs> announcing him on Twitter that he was bringing him back. Had to get in the breaking news action there. Um, <laughs> and then they they brought back um, uh, what's his name. Well, they just signed uh, Tavier Thomas. Uh, Tavier from, Thomas, uh, yeah, as from well. the Texans. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, that secondary. Yeah, I mean, so line they went to work. Yeah, absolutely, and just building depth. I think that's the big key for this offseason. You know, bringing in guys that have starting experience, but also know their role if they have to be that backup or just versatile um, depth is pretty much what they've been adding, and obviously getting. You know, Bryce Hall from the Jets as your third corner, having opportunity to compete with Zion McCollum. I think that is a good move. And then bringing in Tavier Thomas from Houston, who's going to compete with Christian and Izian for the nickel spot. I think that's great. And then the offensive line guys that they brought back, I, I think, you know, those guys, you're not, you know, we'll see who else they bring in because obviously they're going to attack those positions in the draft. I, I think we can all say that. Um, because of the depth of it, like there's going to be a lot of guys available, whether that's round one through round three, but really with these additions, you can set yourself up. If let's say it doesn't work out in the draft, you still have guys to fall back on. I I think that's important. And also they provide competition and they're going to push guys. They're going to push Robert Hainsey. 
Um, and they're going to push, you know, obviously to start at one of the guard spots. So I think that is a really good sign for the team moving forward. Yeah. And I'm trying to find um, the, I think here it is from the combine. J Jason light was asked about that. I'm trying to find the direct quote so I don't misquote him, but um, here it is. Um, he was asked on what he thinks separates the Bucks from other teams that went went further than in the playoffs, and he said, well, it's a lot closer than we thought, and that was good to see. That was a sign of great organization, scouts, coaches, players. So I think when you look back to 2020, we had a lot of depth, some veteran depth, some young depth, but we had a lot of depth, and I think depth might be key. Mm -hmm. So right there, that tells you, you know, they're going out there. They're bringing in these depth guys with plenty of starting experience. We'll start in the secondary, obviously bringing back Jordan Whitehead, huge part of that. Bring back Antoine's old running mate. Um, you know, I talked about this when he was signed last week. Some of the same things that drove Bucks fans crazy about Jordan Whitehead's games haven't gone away. You know, he's he missed 20 tackles last year. He can still mm -hmm. take bad angles trying to get that big hit to make you know make everyone go oh you know but mm -hmm. um you add into the fact sometimes i mean he let up seven touchdowns now he went on twitter and disputed with pff that one of them was not on him <laughs> um so six touchdowns but you know he still lets up some some plays and coverage but um you know that can be a little he, he has progressed in that area i still want to call him a ball hawk you know, he had eight interceptions in his three years with the Jets. Obviously, three of them in that week one game against Josh Allen. One of them the rest of the way. So he's a little bit better in coverage than he was when he left the Bucks. I'm not going to take that away from him. There has been improvement. Um, I still I still think that they could have done a better job, perhaps. Maybe. I mean, he fits the culture, the tone, everything. We can get into that. I'm happy to have Jordan Whitehead back. He's a great guy. Great talk to in the locker room. Um but it seems like it's it's still one of those things where, okay, if you're bringing Antoine down in the box and you're mm. asking Jordan White to play one high, which he did a lot better again in New York. Um, I'm not saying it's Ryan Neal level bad, but it's still not super comfortable. I'm still not super comfortable in seeing it. Mm. Um, but, you know, we'll see what they do. They still have an open spot, I feel like, in that position. Maybe they look to the draft, maybe not as high, but still – uh, maybe like a Tyke Smith or something from Georgia. They spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with those guys. Um, and, and they like Kayvon Merriweather a lot too. Very instinctual yeah. uh, guy, but he's more of a box player. Um, but yeah, bringing in Tavier Thomas to push Christian is in a uh, guy who's got starting experience under his belt, really solid in run defense. He's, he's graded out really well throughout his career in run defense. He's not a turnover guy. He's not going to make a lot of plays, but again, you know, it's not something that the, Buck secondaries have really been known for is a lot of mm -hmm. turnovers. Uh, Bryce Hall was a starter in 2021. He played really well, um, kind of thrust into action there. Um, lost his starting spot to Sauce Gardner <laughs> and DJ Reed when they brought him in here. Can't mm -hmm. combat that, but he's been a really valuable star spot, starter, uh, spot starter for them over the last couple of years. Two starts last year, interception, touchdown, fumble, uh, fumble recovery. So, um, you know, he, he's a guy that, again, gives you that layer of depth. Now, I think they do want to give Zion that shot to start on the outside. Um, mm -hmm. But I still don't feel like this secondary is complete, whether that's at safety, whether that's at corner. I still think there's moves to come probably likely in the draft, uh, maybe even at both positions. Um, and, and we'll kind of see how the draft falls. I wouldn't rule out round one for corner. I don't know if you've ruled that out. Uh, even given the recent additions, um, as far as how the depth is there now. So if guys get injured, you know, you have guys who can step up that are capable starters. Right. Where do you see that transferring into the Jets? Um, I mean, into I'm sorry, reading a comment, reading, <laughs> reading into the draft here um, coming up in April. Yeah, I, I still think it opens the door for both of those positions like you said i think corner still on the table for round one uh corner is probably one of the deepest positions in this draft like it's really good uh you can find corners i think till round four um i think it's that good so and then safety same thing i think there's a lot of names that could be available round three round four and having those two third round picks that would be perfect to you know look at those spots whether it's safety or corner um, you know, I'm really, I really like Cole Bishop out of Utah. I think he would be a good fit for, you know, depth as far as, 
you know, maybe you just groom him for a year and then he comes on, you know, throughout the season. Uh, but with the additions, like we talked about, Jordan Whitehead coming in as a starter, I think that's great. I think he'll be definitely much, much of an upgrade over Ryan Neal and what he can bring to you. Just a better playmaker overall. Helps you run defense, like I said. Yes, he does miss tackles at times, but it also helps that he can play aggressive because he knows he'll have Winfield, he'll have Levante David by his side. So a right. little bit better talent around him, I think, um, right. from that aspect. So that will help. Um, and then, you know, and then looking at corners, you know, I think Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama obviously fits the mold when you look at round one talent and what we like to do scheme wise, obviously that would be a good fit. So yeah, I wouldn't rule those positions out. I think they're really wide open. And I think that's the same for all the, the needs. Like obviously edge is probably the clear cut need that this team wants to continue to add to, but it just depends on how things, you know, shape up, but yeah, edge into your offensive line, like we mentioned, and then defensive backs. I, I still think they can attack that. Um, whether that be, you know, much later in the draft now. Yeah. So let's talk about some of those options. You mentioned Cooley mm -hmm. McKinstry, who um, a lot of people had as the number one corner coming into this season, yes. um, had an up and down year at Alabama, kind of dropped down a little bit. Some other guys, uh, Quinn and Mitchell out of Toledo's kind of jump frog. I think he's like the top guy in this class now. Yes. Um, and Terry on Arnold from his running mate in Alabama, I think jumped ahead of him too, but then it's kind of wide open. Nate Wiggins was getting a lot of talk, and then that's kind of cooled off, even with a you know really good combine performance, especially that forty time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen him available kind of in in some mocks and in some analysts having him available right there at twenty six. I think he'd be another good fit um, yeah. in that first round. Um, so let, we'll go round by round up to round four. So first round, Kool Aid Wiggins, who could potentially be there. Who else has kind of got your eye? as someone who might be in that first round, sneak in that first round conversation? Uh, I, I think, you know, the corners from Missouri, you know, obviously will be an option. Obviously, I think Rake Straw, um, he plays that type of physicality type of game, gets into your your face a little bit, but also can play a little bit of zone too. So I think he'd pr probably be a later round, like late first round or second round option, potentially. Um, you look at... Um, you know, Max Melton, I think is another name that I like. He's climbing. He is. You know, he's just more of a, he's more of your nickel type. Um, you know, I, I think there's a guy from Kentucky. I want to say. Um, Andrew Phillips. Yes. Yeah. Phillips, I think would be a good fit. Yeah. These are like second round guys now. Yeah. I mean, first round, I mean, I think Kool-Aid, you know, obviously would be the top target. I like Cooper DeGene a lot, even though I think he's more of a versatile player. You can probably play him anywhere um but i think he would be a, still a good outside corner um especially right. in a zone scheme if that's what the buccaneers are going to do moving forward uh so i really like his game um but yeah i mean i don't really care for the the guy from georgia lassiter um just yeah. of his athletic ability you know the way he oh. times i'll have to go back and watch the tape but um yeah i, I probably those, more it, it's one of those where his his 40 times have sucked yeah. Um, but I've heard that his game speed is quicker than his 40, his time speed. Right. And that's like one of those things where, okay, until you're going up against Tyree kill, yeah. 40 <laughs> speed matters, you know, yes. you're going to go up against Trey Palmer in practice every day who, who clocked like the highest, um, you know, split there is mm. in the NFL last year. Yeah. You know, you're going to need that yeah. speed. And, 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 and another name, you know, TJ Tampa, obviously, for obvious reasons, his last name is Tampa, but right. he can also play very well. Um, good corner, uh, has a good length to his, um, you know, his frame. So those would be probably more options for round two. But I think round one, you're really looking at at Kool Aid McKinstry potentially being available, or maybe Rake Straw from Missouri. I think those would probably be your your targets. Yeah, I I agree. Rake Straw is a tricky one to read right now because mm -hmm. he's. He's that twitched up corner, can play inside outside. He's like a yeah. Todd Bowles guy. When you watch him, it's like, all right, that you, you you can see where he'd fit in the defense right away. Um, but he's starting to kind of, I mean, um, Trevor Sycamore over at PFF just put out his three three round mock, and he had him going the second 
the yeah. Tampa second round pick. So his market is kind of where is he going? I think at this point it's all about flavor, you know, your flavor of the month, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you're feeling. Yeah. Um, teams are feeling. We'll see where he ends up on people. Another guy, Mike Santa still um, mm-hmm. from Michigan. He's a guy yeah. who's kind of been kind of up and down. And those are all second round guys. So like, that's yeah. a lot of names that you could get if you don't attack that position in the first round. Even going to the third round, Andrew Phillips is that fringe second, third rounder. Mm-hmm. Um, you could go back to the Auburn well with the DJ James uh, or his running mate, Nehemiah Pritchett. I like Pritchett. He had a 4 3 7 40. He's not a ball hawk, but let's face it, no Auburn cornerback is. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, the thing about Pritchett and James, for that matter, um, the adversity they've gone through the last three seasons. Do you think their name is Baker Mayfield? They've had three deep defensive coordinators the past three years. Oh, um, yeah. So it's been, a, you know, they've learned three different defenses, so they can play in any system, really. Man, zone, whatever, Tampa defense, whatever you want to put them in, they're capable to play those 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 defenses. So, um, you know, after that, there's a few other names that don't jump off the board for me. I'm just like, I think that's kind of what wraps up for me at corner safety. Jaden Hicks is my draft crush. I don't know if they go them with him in the second. Maybe he falls to the third and they and they grab him at one of those picks. Uh, I think Tyler Newbin, safe to say, like those guys, Tyler Newbin and uh, Bullock. Um, mm. And who's the other guy? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Cole Bishop out of Utah. I really like him. I know there's um, another kid out of Maryland, I want to say. Uh, I forget Bo his Bra- name. Yeah, yeah. Bo, Bo Bede or something like that. Yes, yeah, he's another one. Um, but yeah, Cole Bishop would be my dude. I just think he can play multiple positions, play that strong safety for you, play um, nickel if, if needed. Uh, so I think he would be a good fit, good athlete, obviously, and shows well on tape. So right. I, I I think he would be a good third, third round, round sele- yeah third fourth round selection, um you know John uh, Javon Bullard another Georgia dude and yep. then Tyreek Smith I think obviously those guys would be good fits I think Bullard I probably like a little bit more he's probably a little higher rated mm. uh, just because of his instincts and you know good athleticism so yeah those would be definitely targets to look at. Not a deep draft for safety as far right. as, I mean, I think, you know, you can get, you know, maybe Smith in the fourth round, um, but maybe um, Bo in the fourth round out of Michigan, out of Maryland. But mm-hmm. after that, down the line, you're like, it's not, I mean, there's, they're clearly developmental guys and not going to help you for year one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so they've got options that in the secondary. I think still think both of those positions are in the in play. Again, yep. the name of the game is depth. If you're doing the count right now, the Bucks have three safeties on the roster. You're doing the count at cornerback. They're at five five corners with Dean Zion, uh, Christian Tavi, Tavier, and Bryce Hall. So right. usually teams like to keep five or six. Um, you know, nine to ten in that room total. Um, so they've got an opening at and Christian is you can play safety too. So He's kind of that versatile piece there. So maybe, you know, is it a safety? Is it a corner? Um, they could still add to that room for sure. Another another room they're definitely going to add to. And uh, MK asked this over over here. Center or guard for the draft? Is Hainsey the future center of Tampa Bay Buccaneers? <laughs> I don't think he's the future, but I think he's the right now. Um, the Bucks did well to bring, bring in Ben Bredesen from the Giants. He's had an up and down career, uh, but let's face it, he was on the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> They've had an up and down uh, the last couple of years. Certainly Daniel Jones doesn't do him any help, but a lot of moving parts of that offensive line, a lot of inconsistent play. Evan Neal, Andrew Thomas for the first couple of years was just terrible before he turned it on year in year three and got that big contract extension that Werfs is about to shatter. Um, and then, you know, last year was a mess for him. Started at left guard, moved to center, moved to right guard, moved back to center. He was just, you know, with no help uh, really on that team quarterback play. I mean, they were starting Tommy DeVito there for a little <laughs> while, you know, Tommy, yeah. Tommy Cutlets was playing there and, you know, he has no idea what he's doing back there. He's just <laughs> having fun, man. Um, capitalizing on some on some you know what is it vodka vodka parm <laughs> cutlets and stuff out there so, i mean he wasn't really bailed out by his quarterback play holding on the ball too long and stuff like that yeah. he's never been super consistent but he's a guy who's got 24 starts over the last 27 games and can give you someone that's going to push hainsey 
who mm-hmm. is going to push a rookie guard potentially if they go that route in the draft. They brought in Sue Opita from the Eagles. Um, he played really well. Josh Capel did an excellent breakdown on him over at Pewter Report. Checked out, check that out um, if, if you can. You know, a uh, very powerful guy. Um, he had, I think, six starts for them last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, you know, he's a guy who just you know, undrafted free agent hasn't really gotten his chance with those with that Eagles team uh, having such a strong offensive line group until someone went down. But he'll come in and he'll be a guy who's going to compete, push that you know potential rookie guard. Uh, they'll both compete at those spots, uh, and Breedison will compete with Hainsey for that spot. Um, and that's what you want. You want these guys to push. I'm kind of looking at the room right now at center and throughout the entire line. Um, and by my count, they have about eight guys on yeah. that who are locks. And you're talking about Tristan, Gedeke, Hainsey, Mauk, uh, most likely Breedison and Opita just because of the money they gave them. Um, yeah. And then uh, Brandon Walton, who yeah. can play – all over the place. Justin schools, another guy. I mm. think they keep nine just because of the flexibility of Breedison because of the flexibility of Walton, uh, obviously schools, your swing tackle. So they're sitting at eight guys right now. I think that last and final spots probably going to be a guard unless yeah. Jackson powers. Johnson is there. Some somehow I could see them taking a developmental center down the line just because you want to be prepared. Mm. Um, but again, it's one of those spots where, Lightworks is magic, man. <laughs> like he could yeah. easily go turn around next year in second round and find a center and plug him in starting. That would be, you know, just amazing, especially with young talent around him and the mm. veterans on the outside. So uh, if you're looking at this draft, are you more concerned about landing a center, landing a guard? Are you going first round now that you got these depth pieces here? Um, or, or are you more like let light do his thing in the second and third round? It's half it's worked. Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, Alex yeah. Kappa, Hainsey, Gedeke, Mauk. <laughs> like, are you letting him do his thing in the second, third round, or do you still think first round is a, is is an option for them um, as far yeah. as guard or center, and which one's your priority in this draft? Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, finding the best interior offense alignment that you can, whether that is center or guard. Um, I think there's upgrades going to be available at either spot. Uh, so there, I think there is a possibility that, you know, JPJ is, is there at 26. Um, and if he is, then you probably make that your selection and you put him in to start at either guard or center. I think he could play both easily. Um, so I, I think that would be definitely an option. I know Graham Barton has got a lot of hype for the Buccaneers as far as, you know, mock selections, and he would be an excellent candidate to be their first round pick. And it it really just depends on like if a certain edge, you know, falls to them at 26. But for me, and I think you would agree with this, I I think they are going to look in that second or third round because that is really where Jason Light has his money, man. He he knows how to find them. He knows what to look for. He knows what type uh, he has and what to find. So, yeah, I, I feel very comfortable you know, if they don't get one in round one, I know the next day they're going to find somebody that can come in and, and play right away. And you would probably lean more to uh, finding a good guard at that point uh, to play left guard. And you roll back with Hainsey, especially, you know, since it is his contract year and, you know, you probably move on from him after this season. And, and that's why you bring in a, a Bredesen to to push him and potentially start as well. And you have Opeta to challenge at guard and you just really build your team better that way. Uh, so I, I think there's going to be plenty of options for them, especially in rounds two and three to find a legit interior offense alignment. Yeah. I, I think when you look at, it, I think there's been a lot of buzz around Zach Frazier. I don't think he cracks the first round. Um, I think he'd be an option for the bucks if they do trade out of the first round and the second and that, you know, yeah. 40 range or whatever. Right. Um, I think he'd be an option for them, but I don't see him as an option in the first round. I think it's for, for center, it's probably JPJ or later on. Um, mm-hmm. I really think that's that's what it comes down to for the Bucks if they stay at 26 and if he's available. Um, you know, you mentioned Graham Barton, Troy Fashanu, um, the other guy from uh, Washington. Mm-hmm. I think he's another guy. He's played tackle, but he's likely to kick inside. I think that's another option for them if they do stay at 26, although his, he's kind of cooled off a little bit into the top of the second round. But again, 
we have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> they have no idea what they're talking about. Right. Um, you know, they're going to kind of general consensus, but then you see things happen every year and you're like, whoa, where this guy supposed to, where is he going? Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, I think that's what you're looking at. Second round becomes a lot more interesting because I think you got a, a bunch of different names there. Um, I think Dominic Puny is a guy who's moved, mm. kind of improved his stock. He was a tackle at Kansas um, who's kind of, bumped himself into that if he slides in the interior he could be a really good guy i think christian haynes is a big one mm -hmm. a lot of people like christian haynes from yukon um he, he had a fantastic combine as well showed off his speed his 10 yard split was really good um i think it was like 1.72 or something like that had really mm -hmm. good raz as well um so there's some guys there uh my favorite prospect mason mccormick Mm -hmm. He's starting to sneak up higher and higher in the third round. I wouldn't be shocked if I'm not saying Cole Strain shocked, but if he <laughs> snuck into a second round, um, you know, guy right there, I think he's still more of a third round, but I think now early third round, I don't think they can get him at 89 mm. where I've had a mock to them. So I think that that involves a move. They wanted him. Um, uh, who else is there in that second, third round? Yeah, I, I think I think you look at like Christian Mahogany from Boston yeah. College. Boston, yeah, I, I think he, I think you'd be good. There's a lot of hype on Cooper BB, but I just don't know if he's you know schematically a, fi a fit for them. But again, he's another guy that can move people and, and knows how to you know win at the point of attack. Um, so yeah, I'm with you on Mason McCormick. I think. He's pretty much a buccaneer. He's a buccaneer already. I mean, you already attacked. You already attacked North Dakota State. Now you go to South Dakota, right. and yeah. you just you you make that. you make that happen. Um, and he can play center or guard, so he could be your future at guard or center. You know, down the line when you know Robert Hainsey eventually you know leaves or comes back to just be a backup. You know, there's there's options there um, for the Buccaneers, and, and especially on day two and three. So, yeah, and I know another option too, at least with the last um, offensive staff, was intrigued, you know, potentially next year having Cody, Cody Moke uh, slide into center as well. Thought right. he'd be a really good center. So, I don't think you need to necessarily worry about if you get a flexible enough guy, whether that be a Graham Barton, whether that be a Mason McCormick, whether that be, you know, one of these other guys who got some position flexibility that mm. can play center. I think it's a lot easier to fill the guard spot than it is the center spot. And if yes. you get some guys with some attitude, again, Mason McCormick has some attitude. We've seen Cody Moak have some attitude out there on the field. If you get some of these guys that can bring the right attitude, have the right smarts, and have the right skill set to, to, to make that move from guard to center, either this year with either side, um, then I think it's easier to tackle guard next year. Or maybe you, you, you know, you've got some extra money, you bring in a veteran, you know, to have, have a solidified veteran, whether that's left or right side. So I think the play is guard here. I think they just let out, you know, if they can upgrade at center, I think they will. Mm -hmm. I think they, they'll be happy with what they have. Brandon Walton plays center too. Um, yep. Not advised, but he can play center in a pinch. So you'll have a capable backups there, versatile backups there. And I think that's the position that they go for. Guy who intrigued me too, just I was watching his tape on my last, when I did my mock off season, uh, Taylor Bordellini from, from mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Yeah. He's another versatile guy, can play up and down the line, super smart, super physical. He's one of those Wisconsin linemen, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't take no shit from nobody. So yeah. there goes my my rating here on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so I think I think they've got options there. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, whether that's center, whether that's guard, whether that's corner, whether that's safety. But you brought it up. Let's jump to it. It's the elephant in the room here. Mm -hmm. What's going on an edge? I mean, they've got Yaya Diaby, Joe Tryanshinka, Anthony Nelson, mm -hmm. uh, JTS, and Nelson in the final year of their deal. Right. Uh, and then they've got Marquise Watts, undrafted free agent, and Jose Ramirez, who was a seventh round pick but spent the year in the practice squad. Um, mm -hmm. He actually got rewarded with an elevation in the playoffs, giving him that playoff check for the work. And, and I know for a fact that the front office is high on those two guys, mm -hmm. but that's, that's not enough. And that can't be enough. Um, and the well is dry in free agency. I mean, <laughs> you could go with an aging guy. You could get a Justin Houston. You could get a Kalai Campbell. You could get a Cal Van Noy. Right. Uh, you get one of those types if you wanted to bring a veteran in, but I don't know if that's the play. I don't know if yeah. that's the move because now you're just hindering another young guy. Um, mm. I think you, if you're going to bring a guy, you are bringing a young guy. and 
that's what you want to do. But the problem is here, Dr. Plus, is there ain't no real good options in this draft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it gets it gets thin pretty quick, um, especially after the top three guys that you know most people are talking about. Um, but you know, just looking at the current group that we do have, obviously you're hoping for a lot of internal growth. Um, you know, with Yaya Diaby taking another step, you're hoping Kalaja Kansi can come on and, and be even more impactful uh, than he was last year. Marquise Watts, I like a lot. I hope they give him an opportunity to really get after the quarterback more. I think he's got a lot to his game and skill set. Um, you know, Anthony Nelson, I, I like him more as just steady being, you, you know, being, yeah, he's steady Eddie, being a solid contributor. He knows what his job is. Um, I actually would prefer him to play more inside instead of edge. In he my did opinion. last year a little bit. Yeah, he did. That, and I, <laughs> that, that ball spit out there with Kalaja can't see and Anthony Nelson, that inside linebacker yes. still blows my mind. That was just like balls. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> but crazy I, with I, it, man. Yeah. I, and I feel that's where he succeeds really well because again, he's longer than most guards that he goes up against. He knows how to disengage from the inside and, and push the pocket a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, just looking at the options that they can add, it's it's going to be tough, but there is a possibility. And I spoke about this last night on, on the live. It's like there's a possibility for one of these guys to fall, whether that's Latu from UCLA because of the medicals. Uh, Jared Verse could potentially fall. Uh just because of the depth and the strengths at wide receiver, there's going to be a record number of wide receivers going in round one. Offensive. There's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of offensive tackles going in round one, um, and then obviously the quarterbacks. Like if we get five to maybe six quarterbacks in round one, which could happen, <laughs> That's pushing guys down the line. Yeah, so it just keeps pushing, and and again these edge rushers, they're not any of them are really not blue chip guys. Like we're not saying they're automatic top five locks as far as picks or players. Right. Dallas Turner is the only one that maybe top 10. A yeah. lot of people have him going and, and even him. I don't, I'm not super high on what I've seen the Turner. Right. Right. My, my number one is, is law to, in, in my opinion, just from a pass rush standpoint, he's really complete in his game. He knows how to get after the quarterback. That's what I look for. And then Jared first right behind him because he's just so damn strong. Like he knows how to win with power. Out yeah. traits though. Plus. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, traits and athleticism and people love what they're seeing out of Dallas Turner, man. Yeah. I Which mean, when I you say can, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Because when you can run a four, four, two, like he did and show that athletic ability, like, yeah, that's enticing. Same thing with Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson has all the traits in the world, probably the best get off out of all the pass rushers. But the problem is he doesn't have the production, you know, so there's that issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, Chop Robinson is probably the most likely to make it to 26. But then again, the draft is crazy. You talked about it. Preference is a lot of these things where a certain team, it just takes one team to like somebody that much and they end up, you know, going top 20. Um, yep. So, and then you could take that the other way and these guys could fall, you know, right into your lap. So I think that is what the Buccaneers are hoping for. At least one of these guys falls to, let's say 21 or 22 and they can go up and go trade for them. Um, or they just make it to their spot. Uh, right. And really after that, you're looking at Marshawn Nealon. You're looking at, you know, Isaac from Penn State. You're looking at from um, Kamara, I think is his last name. Muhammad Kamara from Colorado. Yeah. 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 So you're looking Shaq at some Barrett. of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's very I mean, similar size to Shaq. Uh, he's, it's like everything's, he's like a very similar, not, not oh, when yeah. you watch him, but like, just like when you look at just like the, the, um, the, when you look at like, his the way he tested if when you mm -hmm. look at you know his height his weight his production right. it's all very similar. yeah measurables right yeah yeah i mean so after that i mean javon solomon you know from troy you know so you're looking into sort of those guys chris which braswell. are right. yeah chris braswell from alabama um, yeah i mean uh braylon trice another washington kid but you know i don't know if we keep going back to that well uh 
and then you know do they you know do they look at just and continue to improve the defensive line you know do you look at like a Braden fisk from florida state do you look at a john uh johnny newton from illinois if he somehow falls to 26 like okay. do you look at some of these guys to really just improve your pass rush from the interior i know it would take away from vita vea potentially being off the field but if you can improve your pass rush you know that way which they did with Kalaja Kansi, maybe that's somewhere where they go and look at you know some of these defensive linemen that could potentially just push right. the pocket and maybe make it easier for your edges that you currently have right and unfortunately for you there's no real five tech type of guys in there right <laughs> Yeah, they're all the three tech. They know the, the, those under tech stuff like that. So you're not getting Logan Hall off off the starting spot right there. But guys who can rotate in with Kalaja, guys who can rotate in with Kansu, who can provide that Fisk had an amazing combine. He's yeah. uh, he's he's your ultimate lunch pail guy, but he's got amazing get out. He's got shorter arms, which can right. you know he can get neutralized in the run game. But if you're using him as a, as a pure situational passer. Um, yeah, a pass rusher. I mean, he can get after the guy. I think mm -hmm. what you said is kind of what I think though. The Bucks are probably obviously hoping one of those guys, and, and I think one of those guys meaning a lot to reverse falls to 26. Mm -hmm. If not, you've got extra ammo now. You traded Carlton Davis, and a lot of fans are like, Oh, I don't want to trade a third round <laughs> pick. You know? yeah. But really, when you look at it, edge rusher is the spot. That's the spot they need help. And I think if you look at verse or lot to and no, that's no like shade on, on Yaya or any of these guys. I think those mm. two those two prospects bring more and give the Bucks at least a shot at a true number one guy with some development um, yeah. that can be that premier pass rusher on this team. Um, so moving up to 21, 20, you know, 22, if they need to, to land them and utilizing that third round pick, look. Jason, as it stands right now, the Bucks have picked 126 in the fourth round. They don't pick again until 220. Mm. That's a long way to go for Jason to pick. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's shown the last two drafts. He's not afraid to deal from next year's draft. He did it with Zion, um, mm. and then he did it again the, last year with Trey Palmer. Trey. Yeah, Trey Palmer. Um, so he's not afraid to move next year's picks if he likes the prospect. But if he could use that third-round pick, move up a couple spots, grab one of those guys, pick up maybe a fifth-round pick, and now he's got his pick in every round again, I wouldn't put it past them. Um, mm. and we'll, we'll see what happens. I I think that at this point, you you can never be predictable. Um, you can never be like, okay, this is what they're going to do. But <laughs> at this point, when you look at this roster, there's a large hole at one position, mm -hmm. and, and that's edge. And I think they need to do whatever they can to probably get one of those guys, even if it means giving up a little bit more than what you want to. So. I'm yeah. on that board with you. Lot two verse or bust. I think you got to come away round one with one of those guys, and then everything else kind of still falls in place. You know, even if you move on from that of the third round pick, you know, you can still get your guard um, in round two or three. You can still get yeah. a cornerback in round two or three. Right. I know people want a running back, but I don't. I, I don't think that's a huge pressing. Sure, they would love a guy, but I think you can get that guy you need with Chase back. And what I'm talking about is a is a pounded guy in between the tackles someone mm. who can get that short yardage that the bucks have struggled so long uh of getting i think you can get him in the fourth fifth round i don't think you need mm. to burn a top three you know day one or day two pick on him um right. tight end they need to get another guy there's nothing left in free mm. agency you're not getting any help there unless someone gets cut yeah. miraculously but you know if they feel like they need another guy there you know we'll see what Payne Durham becomes but again that's a 4 5 6 round type of guy you can grab and see what you got and throw him in the yeah. mix um you know you know same thing with some of these other positions tackle you know they they brought back Justin School but you can always develop tackles i know they like Silas Danzi a lot mm -hmm. um quarterback you should always be drafting and developing quarterbacks uh, yeah. Kyle Chaskin is last year. That seventh round pick looks like a good spot for one. Maybe that comp pick that they got in the sixth. Uh, maybe that's where you kind of pluck a guy. Um, you know, but wide receiver is another one too. And we'll wrap it up the show. It's just talking about wide receiver mm -hmm. uh, because Keon Coleman's scheduled to come in for a top 30 visit. Uh, the Bucks have been linked to in mocks from the professionals from, you know, Brian Thomas Jr. to Keon Coleman to, um, some of these other guys, Troy Franklin, I saw an early one. Mm. Um, it's one thing that the fans aren't thinking a lot of fans, you know, not 
most fans aren't thinking about it because they see Mike and Chris, but some of them are like, hey, what about? And and as rightfully as they should, you know, Chris mm-hmm. is a free agent next year. Mike has got one year, you know, two years left on his deal. Um, Trey Palmer looked good, but you need someone to push him. Right now, your wide receiver four is Raheem Jarrett. And mm-hmm. I like Rack. The team likes Rack, what they saw out of him. Um, but you got to be thinking about that spot too. Um, and I don't know if you, I don't know if there's someone in the third round that maybe you're like, you know, maybe Brendan Rice, but back past that, like if you're going to put a pick in there, mm-hmm. I think it's it's an early pick. Right. Or you kind of just figure it out next year, get some undrafted guys like you do every year, see what sticks. Maybe, you know, there's a veteran release at training camp or something like that, kind of like with the David Moore pickup. Maybe, you know, maybe Josh Reynolds is still in play or something like that. I don't know. But I think wide receiver is another position that you kind of have to look at, even with that first round pick, um, yeah. if the chips don't fall the right way, uh, potentially getting someone in here. And, you know, again, they're moving to more of 11 personnel, which mm-hmm. is three wide receivers on the field. Liam Cohen already told us that Chris is going back in the slot. So you need someone opposite Mike Evans, and it could be Trey Palmer, but it could be someone in the draft. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I think, you know, obviously round one becomes an option for receiver if the things that we talked about don't, you know, take place. If you, you're not able to get that edge rusher, you're not able to get, you know, a Jackson Powers Johnson. I, I think receiver definitely comes into play because it's probably the deepest position in this draft. So, um, it, it's, it's really star. Like it's really studded throughout. Um, you have options. You're going to start a receiver in round three. Yeah. Yeah. You really can. You really can. And, and that also gives you the flexibility to, you know, potentially wait on it. Um, but you really have to see how, how many guys are coming off the board in those top 20 picks. And it could be a lot. Um, so I, I think it's definitely like, if you're looking like a, at a, uh, Donna, a Donald Mitchell from Texas, um, yeah. you look at even Xavier worthy, you know, mm-hmm. the four, two, two, you know, the four, two, one speed, uh, you know, obviously would bring a different dynamic to this offense. You look at Troy Franklin, again, another guy that can get downfield and be that X or that Y for you. Um, you know, as far as receivers and well, first round guys that they could look at 26. Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, but then you go into other rounds and I'm a big fan of Ricky Pearsall from Florida. I like Malachi Corley, um, Xavier Leggett, Xavier Leggett. Yeah. Big, big fan of his game. So there's then, so uh, who's the dude from Michigan. Yeah. Roman, uh, Wilson. Roman, Roman Wilson, Javon Baker from UCF, I yep. think is underrated. So there's so many dudes you can definitely uh, choose from. Even Luke McCaffrey uh, from from Rice, like I like his game. I'm McConkey um, too. We didn't even talk yeah. about him. And Lad yeah. McConkey, his wide receiver coach is the Bucks' new wide receivers coach. Exactly. So like yes. there, yeah. there's a lot of guys who they could draft and put in there. Um, mm. One thing I like, Rome Wilson. He said right at the combine, you know, no block, no rock. <laughs> this guy's gonna block for you. Um, oh, yeah. and I think that's what they're looking for too. So I mean, there, there's mm. tons of good, then Brandon Rice, maybe in the third round if you're looking at that. Yeah. Um, I like Xavier Leggett a lot, but there's mm-hmm. some questions. Everyone saw his blazing 40 time and kind of lit the combine on fire, but he's only got one year of production at South Carolina. That scares right. some people. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Troy Franklin is really polished. I really like him. Um, if yeah. they were to look at someone at the end of the then one. like you have the receivers from Washington and obviously Jason light, you know, loves Washington Huskies. So you have Polk, you have Mc, um, McMillan. Um, right. so those are two Rome. options. I'm just well, <laughs> yeah. Rome falling, Rome. falling to 26. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Whoa, that's, jackpot. A, that's a, that's an automatic, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is truly a special position, uh, this year. And I think it's why you know, a lot of free agent receivers are probably going to wait until after the draft. You mentioned Josh Reynolds, like he could still be an option after the draft is concluded. And let's say the Bucks don't come away with a receiver that, you know, they wanted. Um, maybe you can go out and bring that guy in to offer that depth and competition for Trey Palmer and et cetera. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a good group, uh, mm-hmm. guys. Um, I'm going to real quick before we end this, if you guys are watching on Twitter, on YouTube and you have a comment, um, or if you guys have like a question, drop it in here, we'll wrap this up here soon, but I want to give you guys that opportunity, uh, to ask any questions. We've got a, quite a few of you guys on Twitter. I appreciate the support as always. 
Uh, definitely, if you guys haven't already, jump over to YouTube and subscribe, like, turn on notifications, leave a comment. That helps the algorithm. That helps us get in front of more Bucks fans uh, to bring this. We're going to have a bunch of players on soon. Um, we'll probably start with a couple next month. Uh, some guys have some ties to some of the prospects that the Bucks might be looking at, so we'll kind of pick their brain on those guys um, and just kind of see how the offseason is going, what they're up to. We'll get some coaches on as well. Um, and then, you know, we'll uh, we'll be bringing all that stuff. I've got some good draft coverage coming next month as well with some really good analysts, Dane Brugler, Trevor Sikama, uh, nice. our own sick podcast. We've got a guy who does amazing work at the draft. The name escapes me, so I apologize. Um, but, yeah, so we'll have – Draft. We're going to do some mock drafts here, too, some live mock drafts. You guys are going to help me make the picks. Um, so, you know, I appreciate the love, support you guys have given this pod. I know there's 30 of these things out there that you guys can consume. So the fact that a lot of you guys are choosing mine to be one of them that you guys make sure you're here for definitely means a lot for me. So um, and don't forget to check out Real Bucks Talk, especially if you guys want some film breakdown. There's no one better that does it than Plus. Um, he, he's amazing at what he does, especially because it's buck centric yeah. and there's nobody else doing what he's doing. Josh Caper does a good job in his, in his, in his writing for pewter report. But as far as a podcast strictly about that, definitely, uh, check out what they've got going on over there. At Real bucks talk. We got a question from Justin LeBron. I'm going to kind of wrap it up with that one. I think this one, and I'll let you go first on this one. Uh, what would the bucks record be next season? Oh, wow. Man, starting out with a here. Uh, Early. <laughs> uh, I will go. I, I think they improve. So I will go with 10 and 7 uh, as a record. Yeah, it's tough. I know Kirk Cousins moves the needle, right? And they've got, you know, <laughs> darn all Mooney now down there and yeah, everything but... like that. They've got a good defense, good head coach now, finally. Um, and I think it's going to be a really close race between them and, and likely the Saints, even though, you know, they're the Saints, but. They're, they've added some pieces this offseason. Willie Gay, Chase Young will only help their team. Um, so I think uh, the Bucks still, until they get knocked off, um, John Vogel was the draft guy that we have for the Sick Podcast Network. Uh, sorry, John. Appreciate you. Uh, we'll have him on next uh, on next month as well. But I, I'm right there with you. I had them at 10-7 and 7 last year. They fell a, an Atlanta and Houston game away from that. Um, and a second half explosion, the deconstruction uh, in the San Francisco 49ers game that they could have got. Um, right. I really think um, so. Ten and seven, I think, looks like a, a, a logical number. They're, they're pretty much, you know, bringing the same team back. They went nine and eight and had a lot of struggles. You got to remember, I've talked about it before, but Baker that first month was still getting used to his guys. Remember, he split yeah. camps, uh, reps there in camp. He, he doesn't have that now. He knows his guys. He knows what they're. I think this offensive scheme. Dave Canales was good. I think this is going to be really good too. focus on getting the pl the ball into the players hands, players, not plays. Mm -hmm. um, and also going back to 13 personnel, Godwin in the slot. I think it's going to help a lot too. Yeah. Um, and they're still going to add some pieces in the draft to an already what looks like a competitive team. I'd probably take o Opita and Bredesen right now, starting at the guard position. Mm -hmm. If I had to over Filer and Stinney, I don't know yeah. about you. Yeah. I mean, I think I might've taken Leverett. That might be biased to me, but Leverett out of all of them, <laughs> Uh, just because of what he did the year prior. Right. But unfortunately, he was uh, benched behind Hainsey once uh, Jensen was out. But um, mm. I like what they got. You know, there's some question marks about that corner spot, but Carlton Davis yeah. missed like eight games anyway. So, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think they have a good mix. Again, it's a good team. And I think what we're really hoping to see is that internal growth, you know, that we talked about, especially with the younger guys. You want those guys to continue to grow and get better. So hopefully you see improvement from there. I, I think they've upgraded in the offensive coaching staff. I think it's a lot more experience from that, you know, side, side of things. And I think Liam Cohen's going to bring just a little bit more attention to detail and understanding how to, really call the game and really know when to push certain buttons uh, to get, you know, the playmakers of football it means a lot more for Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and the company. So I think that's going to be a good thing, you know, less utilization of the tight end and more of the receivers taking the bulk of, you know, the, uh, the plays and, and really being a focal point for this offense. Yeah. And in the run game too, we talked about yeah, it. You know? I, I, that's the key run game Even improvement. Yep. Giving Baker that uh, that freedom to go there and you know put the guys in the situations that work best for them and if they're not there, switch out of it. 
Yeah. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of good stuff there as well. Um, the defense, we'll see. You know, they're mm-hmm. a better group. They're returning most. I mean, you're losing Shaq. You're losing Devin White, which is maybe a good thing. Uh, you're losing Carlton Davis, but you're bringing Jordan Whitehead. We'll see what other moves they make there. They brought in good depth. They've got good, solid depth there. Brought Greg Gaines back. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see what this team can do. Round out free agency. Round out this draft and what this roster will look like. Yep. Plenty of competition at spots that need competition as far as corner, as far as interior line. Yep. Um, still some work to do, but right now I say 10-7. I'll probably stay there just because the division got better. They have a pretty decent schedule, so... We'll see how things shake and move out. Um, plus, thank you so much for popping on, man. Um, this has been a blast. I want to give you the opportunity to promote yourself again, where they can they find you on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, where they can find that your podcast and uh, just give yourself a promotion, um, all that fun stuff. Yeah, thank you, JC. It was awesome being on here uh, for the first time. This is great, you know, being on your your podcast. You're doing a great job with it, and um, yeah, if you ever need me on again, just you know, sh- hit me up. You know, I'm I'm there for you. So, um, always a good time talking Buccaneers football. But yeah, you can catch uh, my channel at Real Bucks Talk on YouTube. Uh, follow us on Twitter um, as well. We do a lot of stuff on there. You know, interacting. And, and trying to, you know, put up some film studies on there as well, you know, just little clips in here and there. But yeah, check out the channel. Got a lot of great stuff on the way and really can't wait to uh, cover the draft. We'll do we'll have live draft shows this year yet again. Uh, hopefully we can get JC on as well. And uh, yeah, so it will be uh, it'll be fun, you know, just talking, uh, you know, throughout the offseason, seeing this team continue to grow. And I think they're in a really good position with the, the people that they have. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a fun off season. The draft is going to be a lot of fun. I'll definitely pop on. I've got a couple other shows I'll be popping on from while I'm at One Buck Place in between picks. Um, hopefully, night one they'll make a selection and it won't be for not. Um, but yeah, so um, guys, I want to thank you again so much. Obviously, I want to thank Plus for coming on here. Guys, like, subscribe, uh, turn on notifications, uh, tell a friend, share the share the tweet. You're on Twitter. Go on YouTube. Even if you're not going to watch it on YouTube, do me a favor. Go on YouTube. I see there's like almost 300 of you. No, I kind of don't want to end the show because you guys are like, <laughs> you guys are just more people keep coming in. But we've been on for an hour. I got to respect his time, respect my time because my wife is going to kill me if I stay on any longer. Uh, so um, I definitely appreciate all of you guys in here. If you're on Twitter, just hop over to YouTube. You can click the link, um, you know, on my Twitter page to hop over there. Like, subscribe. I appreciate all the all the um, all the comments, all the love, all the views. Um, we'll be back here next week, um, breaking it down. I'll figure out who's going to come on here again. I don't have a teaser for you yet. I'm trying to get the great John Ledyard to come on, but he is a very busy man. You know, his Steelers got some stuff going on with him. <laughs> He's got some family stuff going on. So hopefully, we'll get him on soon. And uh, of course, we'll just be rotating guests. You know, from our great Tampa media. Um, I love to get these guys in front of you if you don't know them or if you do know them always a blast to have them on so i want to thank you guys again for tuning into the sick podcast here on um here pirate parlay on the sick podcast network again i'm jc allen follow me at jc allen nfl on twitter uh go check out bucks game day we're cranking out content like you guys wouldn't believe a lot of great stuff a lot of uh good analysis news uh so go check that out and uh we'll see you guys next week we're out of here peace And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Pirate Parlay on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.